Moshe Landau, Justice of Israel's Supreme Court, Chairman of the Board of Governors of Technion. Shalom. Welcome to Technion City, the Israel Institute of Technology. In a few moments, you will glimpse some of the many remarkable programs that are underway here on ancient Mount Carmel. Programs of teaching and study, of pure and applied scientific research. Here at the Technion are found the future engineers and scientists, architects and research people of Israel. Indeed, the future builders and leaders of our country. The Bible tells us that Elijah the prophet, on the very same spot on which Technion City is now arising, preached against the teaching of falsehood. Today, here at the Technion, we are striving to add to the ancient ethical precepts of the Bible, the scientific truth of our day. And now, welcome to the city called Technion. Dr. Yitzhak Minkoff, Chief of Technion's Institute of Metallurgy. That was uh, an explanation in Hebrew, the official language of instruction at the Technion, of an experiment which we are performing for fourth year students at the Technion. This experiment is intended to demonstrate the solidification of cast iron. And uh, it is typical of work which we perform here at the Institute of Metal which is a valuable component of the Technion teaching and research facilities. Our objectives are to instruct in metallurgy, to do fundamental research, and at the same time to perform industrial work for Israel's growing metals industry. The young men whom you see here are completing their training in metallurgy. The pursuit of knowledge at the Technion encompasses the entire range of science and engineering, from the study of metal ores buried beneath the surface to the phenomena of the air above. Dr. Joseph Singer, one of Technion's outstanding teachers of aeronautical engineering, a graduate of Brooklyn Polytechnic Institute. Our knowledge of the buckling or instability of thin-walled shells of the type used in aircraft or missile structures is still far from complete. Considerable research is going on in many institutions in the world and also the Technion in this field. For the past few years, we have carried out research on the instability of conical shells. Here we put the cone into the pressure vessel, center it by a dial gauge, then apply the twist through this tube and arm, and record all the forces and pressures during the experiment. At the beginning, nothing will happen, and then suddenly the shell will buckle. The data which has been recorded during the experiment is then analyzed, and the shell which has been taken out is also investigated. And finally, this is all used to compare with theory and prepare data for industry. This is our supersonic wind tunnel, which enables us to investigate the flow of air at speeds above the speed of sound. The experiment mounted in the tunnel now is of a supersonic intake. When an aircraft flies at supersonic speeds, the intake of air into its jet engines forms an important problem. 
The behavior of air at supersonic speeds is governed by shock waves, somewhat similar to the waves created by the bow of a ship. By a special optical technique, we are able to see these shock waves in the otherwise invisible air. As the speed increases, a vertical shock wave travels across the picture till it attaches itself to the sharp nose of the infant. When the wave has attached itself in its oblique form to the nose of the intake, the speed is about twice the speed of sound or 1200 miles per hour. By such techniques, we are able to investigate the behavior of air in intakes and other supersonic problems and design accordingly. Set up in this wind tunnel is a scale model of the phosphate storage area located near the phosphate mines in the Negev. Strong desert winds blow away a full 20% of the phosphates, and Technion's experts in aerodynamics were asked if they could find a solution to this problem. The small flags track the velocity and direction of the winds. A specially designed aerodynamic fence is being built to slow rather than deflect the winds. Another area in which Technion plays a vital role is agriculture. Israel's amazing progress in farming is closely linked to the Institute's Agricultural Engineering Department. Head of the department is Dr. Herman Finkel, an alumnus of the University of Illinois. The Agricultural Engineering Department at the Technion is working on the application of science and technology to the problems of farming. We find that the needs of an intensive, highly efficient agriculture are very much related to technology. Here we see a group of students of the farm machinery section, making a test of a plow. We're trying to discover the exact forces that are exerted on this plow under the particular conditions of this test field. The tractor is pulling the plow and attached to various parts of the plow are strain gauges which can measure the stresses. These stresses are recorded electronically in the equipment which follows the plow. And as a result of that, we can analyze just exactly what happens to this plow under these conditions. Our conditions are so wide and varied, we have so many different types of plows needed, that only an accurate scientific analysis can solve the problem that we are facing. Air, land, water. Senior lecturer Anthony Perugno came to Technion from New York seven years ago, bringing with him his hydraulic engineering know-how. This is the towing channel located in the hydraulics laboratory of the Technion. Now mounted above the channel on wheels is a towing carriage. An apparatus of this sort has various important purposes. For example, we could use it to calibrate or check the accuracy of current meters used to determine velocity of streams and rivers in our own country, for example, or in some of the new emergent states in Africa. Ship model testing is very important to both the ship designer and ship constructors. Incidentally, the ship building industry is uh, a new and up and coming industry in Israel. From the model tests in this towing channel, we are able to predict the seaworthiness of the ship as it's been planned. Now, if a uh, ship doesn't pass our model test in the channel, we'd better not try it out in the sea. From the new republics of Asia and Africa come growing numbers of students to Israel. To study science and engineering, they come to Technion. Soon, this young man from Tanganyika will take home a degree in engineering, together with a love for Israel and a command of Hebrew. These are but three of the fortunate 700 students who live in the campus dormitory. 3,000 others scattered throughout the city of Haifa miss the joys of campus life.
In the building research station, new construction methods and materials are devised and tested. Israel's continuing immigration has placed a heavy strain on the task of providing decent housing for new arrivals. Special attention is now being focused on plans for prefabricated housing units that can withstand the scorching sun of the Negev, the southern region that constitutes half of Israel's territory. Keenly aware of Israel's pressing need for scientific guidance, other faculties turned their attention to the study of cosmic rays and the development of new methods to tap the energy of the sun. The range of study is far and wide. A new machine that simulates the rhythmic movement of waves along the shallow shoreline will add to man's knowledge and furnish new understanding of the problem of coastal erosion. The keynote of Technion and of all Israel remains build and be built. A university of science and engineering must never want for classrooms, laboratories, libraries, dormitories. Each year the campus grows bigger and comes closer to completion. Each year several hundred well-trained students are graduated from the Technion. They will create new industries map out new towns and harbors, exploit the full potential of Israel's resources. They will enter the mainstream of Israel's dynamic economy as engineers, scientists, architects. For his role as chief architect of Israel, David Ben-Gurion is honored by the Technion with an honorary doctorate in architecture. To the new graduates of the Institute, the Prime Minister of Israel says, go out to the four corners of our country, use your scientific knowledge, build up the land. And to the friends of Technion everywhere, he appeals, build this institute that we call the Technion so that its teachers and students can build Israel. Let Israel make a lasting contribution to mankind's cultural and scientific development. Let science and truth and knowledge go forth from this center of learning on Mount Carmel. Make the city called Technion a shining landmark on Israel's horizon. Mm -hmm.